All right, this multiverse. Now I know that there's a handful of guys out there that think that they got stock in multiverse. And whenever I do a review on this shit, I usually beat them up pretty good. And then there's like those two guys that get upset. Oh, multiverse is the best. No, actually, they're not. They're they're mediocre. Like let, let, let's be real here. So if somebody were to do a review on these one at a time, I probably wouldn't watch it because I'd probably lose interest. I'd be like, ah. But if you do the whole set in one video, I might stick around for something like that. So that's what we're going to do. Now on this, I basically just bought this whole set of toys for the Steppenwolf. And these are pretty much just placeholders until the better version of this figure comes out. Like we got Cyborg here. And then he's going to hold a place on my shelf until the Mayfix one comes out. Because who knows when that's coming out. And I do want to have a Justice League set. So this will be a nice placeholder until that happens. Then we got the the Batman in the armor suit with like the sunglasses. Once again, he looks pretty good, but I'm sure pretty sure somebody's gonna make a better version of this. Also, if not, I'll keep this one around. This Wonder Woman is by far the worst figure in the set. I feel as if I already already own three of these. Um, this purchase was strictly for the Collect and Connect. Superman, I already owe the Mezco version, so this toy, once again, is the, the figure to me is worthless. I just want the, the Collect and Connect piece again. This Flash is actually really cool. I think they did a pretty decent job on this, especially for Multiverse. Um, but he's just a placeholder until the Mafex one comes out. Sorry, like, it is what it is. The Mafex one is clearly better. And then this Aquaman, like... I know us nerds dream of a day to get an Aquaman with a crew cut, blonde hair, orange and green spandex in a movie. Well, guys, let's face it, that day is probably never coming. So this is the best Aquaman we're probably ever going to get. And this figure, once again, they did a pretty good, a pretty good job on this. Like a lot of these are one-off sculpts. I think the toy looks all right, but after seeing the Mezco one. He's just a placeholder. Let's check him out. All right, so before we break this team apart, let's check him out as a team. And we'll start with scale because I think the scale might just be a little off. So you see Aquaman is definitely the biggest character, just slightly bigger than the armored Batman. And then Batman is slightly bigger than Cyborg. To me, Cyborg should be like the biggest one because he's kind of like a robot, but maybe not. Then you have the Flash. I think the Flash should definitely be shorter than Superman. And then Superman and Wonder Woman are right about the same height. Okay, this time for the comparisons, we're going to take a different approach. I'm not going to pull out the Aquaman collection this time because that's something that I pretty much always do. So this time we'll mix it up. Because I'm tired of hearing the argument of what toys are better or which is which. Because now we're just going to go apples to apples, oranges to oranges, straight up. We're going Hasbro versus Mattel. Marvel Legends versus Multiverse, Marvel versus DC. So let's check him out. So you got Drax the Destroyer over here. He comes with a gun. He also comes with two knives for accessories. You got Aquaman that comes with this trident. Both of these are basically one-off original sculpts made just for the movie toy. And I think both of these sculpts are almost equal. I'm kind of leaning towards the Marvel Legends just because of the sculpt detail in the Aquaman. It's sculpted really well, but not painted quite as clean as Drax. You go all the way down to the boots. Aquaman kind of takes the lead there, just because I know we've seen Drax's boots before. So as a side-by-side -side comparison, I mean, I'm going to go with the Marvel Legends, but I kind of like Marvel anyway, so let me know if you're, if you're leaning in the other direction. All right, we're gonna go through all these figures in one video, so we're gonna make this real quick. First off, the up close detail, this figure is actually not horrible. It's a $20 toy. It's just a placeholder until I get the Mezco version, which is an $80 toy, so those two toys really aren't comparable, but I'd rather have a really nice toy than a mediocre toy. Granted, it does cost like four times as much, but here he is up close. I think they did a really good job on him. They didn't put any uh, paint on his trident at all, but the figure itself, I actually think they did a pretty decent job on him. Like, if you're going to take the time to do a one-off sculpt and then put all this love on the paint, like, 
if, if somebody wasn't making a better toy of this, I would be totally happy with keeping this. Articulation, just real quick, we'll go over a couple of these, not all of them. The head is on a ball. It doesn't move much because of the hair. It looks like he should have an ab crunch here, but he doesn't. But he does turn at the waist, so I guess that's kind of cool. The bicep swivel is always nice. He's got a ball here at the shoulder. And then this pad does come up, so you still get plenty of movement. The single elbow on this, like Marvel Legends does a double elbow, which if you look at this, like you got holes for the pins. So that looks like shit. That doesn't look good at all. And then you got this one, a single elbow with no holes. So I know I'm probably the only one, but I actually like this joint move better and it doesn't move hardly at all, but it looks really clean because you don't have these annoying holes in it. The wrist, this totally sucks. Like it just turns, like nothing good there. They didn't do that weird Mattel joint. They actually did something similar to like a Marvel Legends on the thigh joint, at least on Aquaman. I know they're not all like this. So I really like that joint a lot. Like I really think that's really good how they did it. I kind of like the butt plate on this. So it's just nice and clean. And then on the knee, that's like kind of a weird knee joint. See how the knee pad kind of goes over. Um, I mean, it, so the articulation on this thing, there's a lot of new stuff here that we haven't seen before. And then it, it does swivel here at the knee. Nice, clean joint. Um, then you take a Marvel Legends with the double knee. I think the double knee works really well, but then you still have the holes for the pin. So if they could fill those holes, they would definitely come up a notch. So the ankle, it, it is on a hinge, no pivot. That's definitely a downside. So you take these toys. I mean, I'm slightly leaning towards Marvel Legends, but they're not too far behind on this one. All right, so Batman will go head to head with Thor. I basically picked this one because they both have capes. So if you look at the head sculpt on Thor, I mean, it, it definitely has its issues. The hair looks a little weird. Batman, the multiverse actually looks pretty good. The sculpt on this Batman, it's, I mean, it's really done well. If you look at all that hidden detail in there, like it's textured, like they really did a good job. So I really don't have any complaints with the sculpt or the paint. I don't really care for the design much. Um, just that Batman overall as a figure, I mean, as a character, I just, the shades are weird and the costume just kind of weird, but the action figure itself is actually really cool. He has a cloth cape, Thor has a plastic cape, Batman doesn't come with anything. Thor comes with a hammer, of course. Like you think Batman would have a battering or, or something. But you know, side by side, just looking at them. Um, I mean, Multiverse didn't do too bad on this. I'm not really having a hard time picking. All right, if you look up close to this Batman, he still kind of holds up. Like the uh, paint's bleeding through a little bit on his mask but it's still a really good toy. Then you can really see that sculpted texture detail in there, which that's just something that like all these movie characters are starting to do, and I'm really enjoying it. So this toy is, I, I'm gonna keep this one because I don't see anybody like Mayfex or anybody, I don't know if they're making a better version of this. So I'm totally happy with this. I just don't wanna have two of the same exact toy and one slightly better than the other one because that just, that just gets old. The articulation on this, this one does have an ab crunch. It doesn't really work very well. It does turn at the waist. The ball, the ball shoulders actually works pretty good. I like the bicep swivel. This also has a single elbow. And as you see, it just barely moves, which I know a lot of you guys hate that, but it looks really clean, no pin, no nothing. So I actually kind of prefer that myself, but I'm probably alone on that. The wrist, same shitty wrist, just swivels, no big deal. And then they went back to like the weird, like that just doesn't make any sense to me because you can't display your toy like that. So that's just useless articulation. Like, yes, you can do the splits. No, you'll never pose them like that. So if you can't make the articulation look good, there's really no point in having it. And then this one doesn't have the butt plate like Aquaman. So his legs will go all the way back, which that just makes for a really weird looking butt but he has a cape so i guess who cares and then um he does turn here it's like kind of a low thigh cut it's hitting kind of well but then when you turn it like the armor is off so that's kind of 
whatever it has a single knee which I think that's kind of a new oh a new joint like it's kind of like the opposite of Aquaman it's actually pretty cool and then um, the ankle is on a hinge and that's pretty much so I mean overall this I mean I like this toy I should love it but for some reason I just don't all right we're gonna go ahead on cyborg versus Ultron here for obvious reasons I know Ultron is not really a fair comparison but if you look at them up close you actually see that the multiverse is not that bad so before I decided to do a video like this I was thinking that Marvel Legends was just gonna do a clean sweep on all of these toys but if you look at these two toys side by side you see that multiverse actually really isn't that bad because like look at that like I mean I think these toys are pretty much equal it's like the same quality of plastic basically the same articulation um, I guess multiverse is really stepping up their game and once again like I would love to love this figure but unfortunately Mayfex is making a better version of it one thing that I think is really cool about this toy is that they give you an alternate gun hand so you have the gun hand this thing unplugs let me do it without knocking over the camera and then you plug on his hand so that is a really cool option for this toy because I mean that kind of makes it so like I mean I feel as if you guys definitely earned my money on this but I'm still looking forward to getting the better versions but if you look up close at this like I mean the, the paint out of the face and just something about it it just looks kind of cheap I'm not real sure what but when you hold it side by side of Marvel Legends like it doesn't look much better than a Marvel Legends I love all the time that they took to sculpt all this detail in here and paint like so he's actually a really good toy as long as you don't hold him up next to the Mafex one and that's where he starts to fall apart but on the same scale you know I mean yeah he was like a build -em or something but he wasn't but basically you're going 20 bucks for 20 bucks so I don't think they did too bad on this one either for this flash I went ahead and pulled out the spider-man homecoming figure just for a side-by-side -side comparison now the flash costume for one the movie version of the costume to me that I just don't like the armor on there like I mean flash is somebody that definitely needs to be more streamlined and wear spandex so I don't know where they thought that that was a good idea like I haven't met one person that actually loved that costume so get that out of the way and then you actually look at the toy and the toy is is pretty good I think that they kind of like he, he looks all right but I think that the spider-man definitely won this one like like he just looks like a much cleaner he looks like a more expensive toy like the flash definitely has like that made in Mexico look to him like you know have you ever seen those Mexican action figures and they look really cheap well flash kind of has a little bit of that going on um so it's hard to, yeah it's just I don't know it's just spider-man detail like he has all that sculpted in little detail kind of leaning towards spider-man on this one and you know I'd really like to go with flash but just not gonna happen all right, so here he's up close. So you look at that face, and it's just such like a plain, like doll face, like a little, like a little smirk or a little grin or a little something. Would have definitely put this figure over the top, but they didn't do it. The costume, once again, it's just weird with all these lines and disco, and it's just, just too, just too much for me. But they did take the time. They put a tons of little sculpted detail in there, like those little X's and stuff. So. I mean he, he's a good toy he's not bad at all if you don't feel like spending 60 bucks on the Mafex one then there's absolutely nothing wrong with this figure like like if if Mafex wasn't making other toys like I would be totally content with owning these I do like how they did that little uh flash wing on his calf like instead of his sh shoe and then his shoe has like that's kind of cool like I do like that it's kind of something different the articulation on this is basically the same as the Batman nothing new here he has that ab crunch it doesn't really work turns at the waist the single elbow that doesn't really move much but looks really clean so you're kind of sacrificing looks for articulation which is usually the way that I swing every time then this one kind of has like Aquaman thighs but they're not really as clean they're a little bit gappy um, the butt plate is back but his is definitely a little bit smaller does have the thigh joint but that's worthless to me the knee 
This one actually has a double knee, but it's kind of pointless because it doesn't really bend at all. Like if you take Marvel Legends double knee, that's what a double knee is supposed to look like, not that. So what's the point of doing a double knee if it can't move? Like, so they kind of killed it on that one. You come down to the ankle, still no pivot, just goes back and forth. It looks clean. There's no pin, no knee pin, no elbow pin. So as far as a, a clean looking action figure, um, I like it. It just, um, but it's still just a placeholder, but I got problems. Side by side comparison on this and we're gonna cheat a little bit. We're gonna use the Mayfex Wonder Woman versus the Mattel Wonder Woman. And that isn't a fair shootout at all because the Mayfex one I picked up for 40 bucks, no build a piece. She does come with a stand. This one I got for 20 bucks, and it comes with a Build-A-Piece. And I got my issues with both of them. Like if you look at this Mayfex one, I think she's a pretty good toy. I think that elbow joint looks really ugly. Like I hate that. That shoulder joint is unacceptable. The thighs, they're gappy. And that double knee, like that just looks like shit. So I mean, you, you took you put too much articulation on the figure and now the figure looks gappy joiny just doesn't work for me and then you look at this one this just looks like a really cheap like McDonald's toy like you look at her face like man that come on like Wonder Woman is supposed to be hot like that looks like a I mean I hate to reference a tranny again but hey come on guys I know you're thinking it like that thing, man, the costume just looks really fake and corny and I'm just not buying anything on this figure. Here she is up close. Like, see how like her face is painted weird to where it makes her cheekbones, like her jaw, look really wide and kind of like a dude face or something. I don't know. This toy, like, they did, they did sculpt a bunch of shit on it. A black wash on this would have definitely helped this thing out. It just looks really cheap. Like this toy, like we've already bought so many Wonder Womans to insult us with this kind of a toy. Like you should have made something a little bit better than this at this stage in the game. Um, the articulation, it's basically the same as all the other ones. So we're not going to get into that. This toy to me is it's just a straight throwaway. I actually like this one better. It's not much better, but it's definitely better. I basically just bought this for the build a piece. Okay, this is the part of the video that's totally unfair. On the left, we have the $80 Mezco versus the $20 Multiverse, which does come with the Build-A-Figure. And as you see, the Mezco kind of has the pajama thing going on. Like, I mean, if this, let's be honest, dude. These Mezco figures are awesome. If you look at them side by side with the regular action figure, they don't look that great. Like, they, they don't. Some of them do. Some of them don't. For 80 bucks, does that look like an $80 toy or does that look like an old Mego toy? So, I mean, I do love these things. I will buy them forever, but I kind of question if I'm getting my money's worth almost every time I buy them, especially on the Superman. Side-by-side -side comparison, once again, the multiverse just looks really cheap. The face looks corny, has that shiny plastic, does have tons of sculpted detail on there, but for some reason I am just not digging it. At the same time, Mezco, I mean, it, it's far from perfect, but for some reason I still love it. Okay, here he is up close, and that face just gets worse the closer you hold it to the camera. Like, it's shiny, it's awkward, no facial expression whatsoever. That seam at the bottom of his head, that's just that's just unacceptable. Has a cloth cape, which I, I'm glad that they kind of did that, tried to mix in some soft goods. Um, this toy, it, it's just not working for me. The articulation is basically the same as all the other ones. Nothing new here, except for this one does have a pin at the elbow for some weird reason. Like, And he has a pin at the ankle that I just noticed. So, And he has a pin at the knee. Yeah, what is going on? So, I thought they eliminated the pin. We get to Superman, and the pin is right back. Like, I really like the fact that they do these things with no pin. 
like that really adds to the figure for me like that's like one thing that they have over on marvel legends so so pin no pin on the elbow and then the knee pin no pin and then the ankle like I don't get it. It's just so like a leftover Superman that you had laying around and you didn't feel like updating them like the rest of the team. Like, just not working for me. So I gotta be honest, when I bought these, I thought that these toys really sucked. And I basically just bought them for the Steppenwolf. After doing a side-by-side -side comparison with Marvel Legends, I realized that these toys are actually pretty good. And I'm glad that I got them, mostly just for the Steppenwolf. To me, Superman was a waste of time and a waste of money, but he came with a piece. Cyborg, I actually really like that toy. Flash, I mean, he's pretty good. Like, the costume is weird, but I like him. The Armored Batman, I mean, he's a good toy. Wonder Woman's just freaking horrible. She's by far the worst one in the set. If she didn't come with a build of piece, she wouldn't be here right now. Aquaman, I actually really like. It's just unfortunate that these all are just placeholders. There they are. I'm going to save that Steppenwolf for the next video because I actually want to take some time going into detail on him. Hope you enjoyed this one and thanks for watching.